So you're starting your MCP journey and can't figure out the difference between MCP tools and resources? Well, after watching this video, you'll know exactly what they are and when to use each one. So stick around. First, let's cover the basics of MCP. We'll start by looking at what an MCP server is, how it works, and how it's structured. Think of AI models as programs running inside a box with no direct access to the outside world. Until recently, the way to give these AI models more power was through tools, like searching the web or reading file contents. But this approach had a few issues. The biggest one, no standardization. If you wanted an AI model to use a new tool, you had to write your own custom setup or rely on a framework. Every new tool meant another custom build. That's exactly where MCP comes in. MCP acts like a universal adapter. People often compare it to a USB-C port for AI because it's a standardized interface that connects different AI models to various functions. It creates one standard way for AI models like Claude or GPT to connect to external resources like APIs, databases, file systems, you name it. So what's an MCP server? It's the endpoint that gives these tools and services to the AI model. The MCP server provides a clean standard interface which the model can connect to and discover what tools and services are available. If you had a repository of MCP servers, that repository would be like an app store for AI models. Just like you download apps to get specific info on your phone, MCP server easily plug into AI models so your models can access more information and capabilities. All right, you definitely understand what an MCP server is now but you're here on a mission to find out the difference between tools and resources and when to use one over the other. Let's head over to the official Model Context Protocol website and take a closer look at each one. First, tools. Here's the official definition. Tools enable AI models to perform actions through server implemented functions. Each tool defines a specific operation with typed inputs and outputs. The model requests tool execution based on context. You can think of tools as actions your AI model can take, like sending an SMS or calculating something. For example, if your MCP server is written in Python, a tool could be a Python function called divide. All it does is divide two numbers. So if your AI model connects to this MCP server with this divide tool, it can now do division. Okay, now what are resources? Think of resources as read-only data feeds that the model can look at for extra context. They don't do anything, they just provide information from sources like files or databases. Here's the key difference though. The AI model doesn't automatically ask for this information like it does with tools. Instead, the user decides when to request the resource so that it is passed to the model's prompt. For example, take a look at this resource. Travel, activities, city, category. Essentially, each resource gets identified by a unique URI. In practice, this could mean exposing customer profiles, system logs, or documentation that helps the model give more accurate answers. All right, so you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, can I just create a read-only tool that gets information and passes it to the model? Wouldn't that replace a resource? And that's a completely reasonable question since there is overlap, but the key difference is control. A tool call gets triggered by the AI model while a resource needs to be specifically called by the client. So when should you use a tool versus a resource for your MCP server? Well, think of it this way. Is this feature mainly about providing static or semi-static data to the AI model? Should the client application control when and how this data is requested? For example, a weather API provides weather information. The act of calling the API to get this info makes it more like a tool. Accessing a static document for reference is more like a resource. In summary, an MCP resource exposes structured information that can boost your AI model's knowledge. If you're familiar with Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG, you'll see how this makes perfect sense if implemented and exposed as an MCP resource. And while you're here, please let me know in the comments if this is all clear so far. The distinction should become automatic when you're building your server's functionality. Finally, let's touch on MCP prompts. These are simple to explain. They're just predefined prompt templates. Let's say your app provides travel planning services. Instead of manually writing a prompt every time someone needs to plan a trip, you write a simple MCP prompt. Then users can invoke it with a slash command. 
for example, slash planned vacation, would trigger the prompt, kind of like Slack commands, or if you're an old guy like me, IRC commands. So I'm gonna scroll down just a little bit here because they mentioned that the real power of MCP emerges when multiple servers work together. And I completely agree with this because if you have many servers, each one specialized at one specific thing, like the example they give, they have a travel server, a weather server, and a calendar email server, then those together can help you achieve a common goal. The travel server can look for flights, hotels, and other things, the weather server can check the weather for you and a calendar server might bring in your calendar information, maybe your days off or things like that as a resource during the AI planning process. So the model can take this into consideration. So really having multiple servers working together is super powerful. And that's pretty cool, right? Let me know if this was helpful and thanks for sticking around. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more.